from Canberra, Australia. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, just how little riding can you do and yet still get fitter? It's the question that. Well, Dan, I see, has always wanted to know the answer to, and now we think we've got it. And without giving too much away, I'm quite pleased with the answer. I've also got a brand new Everesting world record, Hacks and Bodges caption competition, and an epic Krispy Kreme donut challenge. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that your brand new men's Tour of Flanders winner, the mightily impressive Kasper Asgring, is not a former track rider, nor cyclocross racer, nor ski jumper like Primoz Roglic, nor a runner like Mike Woods, but rather a champion equestrian dressage rider. Nice. Not had one of those in the pro peloton no. before, I don't think. Uh, we also learned that Krispy Kreme are offering free donuts to anyone with proof of vaccination in the US. So one man decided to ride to every Krispy Kreme store in the Bay Area to claim his bounty. Mm. Now my initial reaction was that at least he'd been burning a few calories between stops on his bike. Yep. Then I read he was using an e-bike <laughs> and actually he was on course to get to every one of the stores until his e-bike battery ran flat. Yeah, he can't charge an e-bike with donuts, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we also learned this week that the Everesting world record has been smashed again by Irishman Ronan McLaughlin, and the bar is now frighteningly low, six hours, 40 minutes, 54 seconds. That's wow. nearly 20 minutes quicker than the previous best. That really is going, so yeah. It takes some beating, that, isn't it? Uh, also, a shout out to Jack Lewis of Wales, who did a triple Everesting, which is 26,000 metres of climbing in only 58 hours. Uh, in doing that, he raised money for Alzheimer's UK. Yeah, two fairly impressive feats of cycling prowess there, you've got to say, uh, which brings us neatly on to our main story this week. So we talked a couple of weeks ago about whether there's any point in training. And judging from your comments, it seems like you're fairly split on whether you feel that yes, there is a point to training, and no, there is no point to training. Well, I think most of us agree on though, is that getting better at something, so progression improvement, is something that we want from our riding, pretty much all of us. But just what does that take? What is the minimum that you can do and still get fitter? Well, so Connor, you'll remember, added 50 watts onto his 20 minute power over just eight weeks of doing four hours a week, two of which were structured training sessions sessions on Zwift. Last year as well, in our four weeks of fitness, uh, I improved by 30 watts uh, on about the same amount of riding, again, using structured training sessions, and again, on Zwift. Mm. Undoubtedly then, structured training does give you the biggest bang for your buck. So what is the least you need to do? We could have a stab at the answer ourselves, really, couldn't we? What two hours a week. Well, we probably shouldn't have a stab at ourselves. It's just a guess, really, isn't it? it? Was, so let's yeah. hand over to an expert, Professor Louis Passfield. Louis, thanks so much for, for, for joining us and for uh, being our training genius again, uh, if you remember that video from, uh, from several years ago. In terms of this question then about what the minimum amount of training you can do is, I mean, fundamentally, what is the minimum? Um, it's a great question, and actually, it's not one that we've got a complete or comprehensive scientific answer to. But if I were to kind of uh, speculate on the, what, we're, what we're talking about here, we're really probably thinking about 30-second efforts. Um, and then the question becomes just sort of how many or how few can we do to really benefit from that? I think if you, if you were doing interval-type training and you were doing less than 30 seconds, then there's a chance that you might not get a broad-ranging benefit from it. But uh, the, the research that's been done on high intense interval training suggests that 30 second intervals are remarkably potent in terms of the effect that they can have on your fitness. And so then it's just a question of, okay, how many do you need? And that probably changes with each individual as well. Yeah, my mind is slightly blown here, Louis, because I was expecting you to come back and say like, ooh, six hours a week, but you come back with 30 seconds. So in, in terms of like a total workload in a week then, I mean, could you literally jump on your bike, do 30 seconds, and call it a day? Um, one 30 second session, one 30 second effort on its own per day is probably not enough, although that's an interesting speculation. And it would be, it may depend upon where you're starting from. So if you've not done anything before and you got on your bike and started with a 30 second effort, it would probably feel quite brutal. Well, it would feel brutal. Um, but it, it, it may be enough to move you on in the first instance. But I suspect that over a period of time, you'd need to extend that to at least three and possibly more than that as you get fitter. But yes, 30 seconds. 
This sounds a bit like me and press ups, Louis. Um, three uh-huh. press ups might not sound like much to most people, but to me, that was max, and um, and that was all I needed to start improving that. Um, so, so coming back to to people's baseline, then, is it a case that the, the fitter you are, the more training you will need to do to maintain your base and and improve? Um, to a certain extent, I think one of the complications as well, though, and this may um, be the situation with Connor as well, is when you've been extremely fit, it looks like you might be able to restore some of that fitness more easily than if you're building it for the first time. Having said that, is there's no doubt that the fitter you are, the more you need to do. So it, it can't, it, intuitively, it makes sense. We know that uh, elite athletes' fitness doesn't change very much despite all the hours of training that they do each week. So um, that's because of how fit they, that they are. And a lot of the time they spend is just uh, based on maintaining an extremely high level of fitness rather than building further fitness. Okay, I mean, that, that sounds like good news for the majority of us then, that the less fit you are, the less you have to do to get fit. Well, the other good thing is, that if you're starting off from a lower baseline, and you stop training, you lose less fitness too. Now, finally, then, what if we flip this on its head then and say that, that for those people that have the luxury of being able to train for as long as they want in terms of hours, is it more beneficial to have 25 hours in the bank in a week or actually is a lot of that just junk? I mean, we know that pros do huge miles, but, but for the rest of us? Um, so again, it's one of those interesting questions that's difficult to fully unpick and there's no doubt that for a professional cyclist they need to do that volume of training because it reflects what they're going to be doing in races. Um, and so they're, they're, making, they're building a number of adaptations that will support them much later on in the race. Now the average cyclist perhaps is a little less concerned with that. Uh, and so there's a, it, there's a kind of seesaw bit to this. On the one hand you can focus on quality and you can push up your fitness which means that for any given effort you're making, it's relatively that little bit easier because you're now fitter. So it was 80% of your maximum, but now you're fitter, it's dropped, so it's only 50% of your maximum. So that helps you with your longer rides. Um, but at the same time, if you really, if endurance is really important to what you're doing, then there's no shortcut to doing the, long, the longer rides. So for most people, I'd suggest that they, they go for variety where they can. Um, and then the final part of their story is where, um, with variety, the challenge is it, it's often not specific, it's often rather general in terms of the benefits you get. So if you really want to focus your performance on something, that's when you start to narrow down and make it more specific to whatever aspect of fitness you want to, you want to build. So if it's climbing hills, climbing hills, if it's short sprints, short sprints, that kind of thing. Great stuff. Right. Thanks so much, Louis. Uh, super interesting as always. Well, that's it then. 30 seconds it is. That's the magic number. Boom. Less than I thought, Dan. Although 30 seconds repeated, it has to be said. Mm. Um, you know, after I spoke to Lou, right, I realised I hadn't been doing any like really hard efforts for ages. So I went and did 30 second intervals mm. on my way home from work. Um, I can fit seven in, right, on my 20 kilometre ride. And oh my God. Goodness me, was I ruined when I got to my front door. <laughs> but the next day, when I thought that my legs would be in bits, actually, they were amazing. Maybe you would have eaten five roadies on your time trial bike the next day. Like. <laughs> Only if they weren't very good roadies, but it's my new thing now, 30 second intervals. So thank I you. Need to give it a try. Mm. Uh, anyway, let us know in the comments section how much riding you are currently doing per week and whether or not that is still enough to keep improving on your bike. Yeah, and do you have a magic training session? We want to know about it. Is it Basically, 30 second intervals? I want to do it. A yeah. uh, reminder, by the way, that if you want to tackle Connor's clearly very effective training plan over on Zwift, it is available there now. So in the Zwift workout menu in training, scroll down until you get to the GCN Zero to Hero plan. Yeah. When we say Connor's plan, by the way, what we actually mean is former World Tour Pro turn top coach Greg Henderson's True. plan that Connor followed religiously. Next up, your weekly dose of GCN inspiration. This is where we pick our favourite three photos or videos submitted to the GCN app, those that we think will inspire us and you the most to get out on your bikes. Indeed, right, in third place this week, winning a snowcap ass saver. I'm not entirely sure what that is, I know what an ass saver is, but I'm not sure what the snowcap refers to. But anyway, this one from Michael J. Dunstan, which is a cracking photo, I think you'd agree. He says, as an Aussie living in Amsterdam, I sympathise with Sai as he struggles with Dutch pronunciations. I don't quite know what he means there. But anyway, this is the Grote Zisluis in Muiden, overlooking the Vecht during a winter afternoon. I think that is Grote Zisluis in Muiden. Is that right? 
I believe. Uh, yeah, Vect you got right, I think. Get involved in the comments section down below. <laughs> yeah, rate me out of 10. For my pronunciation, of course. Uh, well done to you. That assay will be winging its way to you in Amsterdam uh, before you even know it. Uh, mm. Second this week, winning themselves a core blue t-shirt is... Sweatshirt, mate. Yep, sorry, core blue sweatshirt is... H. Khan. Uh, cycling is not a sport, it's a lifestyle. Picked from my morning ride on the 31st of March. Greetings from Brazil. Wow, that is a cool photo, that one, isn't it? Yeah, yes. well, we've had a few skies like that ourselves over the last week we or have. two. Not a quite as warm, warm yeah. yes, but still, there we go. Sunrise shot, tick. Um, and kind of a sunset shot already, tick mm. as well. Brilliant. Right then, yeah, that's a cracker. Finally then, uh, first place this week, winning a Core Blue sweatshirt, an endurance book, and a shadow stand as well. It's a bumper first prize, isn't it? Um, is this one from Mark J. Sooth, a Pinarello on vacation. My mate's trusty steed after riding up to our mountain shallow retreat over the Easter weekend. Wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? In the background is a ski resort of Thion, uh, another quiet mountain road waiting to be climbed, something for the next vacation. That ticks the box for me. It, well, it does for me, except for the fact, Si, that there is no proof that Mark was there with his mate or whether he's just stolen his photo and submitted it on the app. Oh, my word. <laughs> We're going to have to have a, uh, a jury's inquiry. Yeah, one, well, we? let's just give Mark the benefit of the doubt there. Uh, okay. If you are his mate, write in and let us know whether he was there with you. Uh, but anyway, those prizes wean their way to you shortly. Don't get, forget to get involved ready for next week's show by submitting your inspirational photos or videos to do with cycling, of course, over on the GCN app. Uh, now, if you need a little bit of help in making your inspirational photos even more inspirational, this next thing might just help you. Yes, as you can see, it's a cobblestone carpet so that you can make your own cobbled berg wherever you live, approved by none other than the Lion of Flanders, Johan Museo himself. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're gonna start, unusually, with politics. Don't turn off. Do not turn off. It's only brief, you can stick with us, but when somebody proposes to throw $20 billion at cycling, we sit up and take notes. We do. Don't we? Uh, Joe Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan that puts fighting climate change at the core also includes that $20 billion for cycling, improving safety being at the top of the list and thereby increasing the number of riders out there on the roads. Yeah, there is also a big slug of cash in that $2 trillion put aside for electric cars, both manufacturing and promoting their usage. But interestingly, recent research led by Christian Brown from Oxford University showed that active transport, like cycling, is actually 10 times more effective at lowering carbon emissions than even electric cars. Now there's a multitude of factors at play, but not least is the sheer weight of electric cars just makes them inefficient compared to bikes or indeed e-bikes. But still, unlikely to also tick the job creation economic stimulus boxes like building more cars, of course. Well, that is a fair point, but Dan, in more research now from Sebastian Krauss and Nicholas Koch, Drawing on data from over 100 EU cities, okay, they concluded that COVID-era cycling provision has actually demonstrated a high return on investment. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, cycling has increased by between 11 and 48% on average, Ooh. generating between $1 billion and $7 billion in health benefits alone. Although the authors do warn that much of that increase is going to depend on the favourable cycling conditions remaining, which is definitely not a given. No. That's it. Remember, reach out to your local authorities and tell them you need your infrastructure. All right, some racing news now, and unfortunately Paris-Roubaix has been postponed to the first weekend in October. COVID infection rates are spiking in France, and so the authorities, quite rightly so I think, felt it simply isn't feasible to run the men's and the inaugural women's race they've been waiting over a year for now. Um, so October the 2nd for the women's race and the 3rd of October for the men's race. Which is great isn't it? A day each for the two races feels like a very positive thing to me. Uh, the fact that there's a women's race finally of course as well but there's a still a long way to go in the fight for equality in cycling as proven by the new epic kite mark that has just been launched. That's right, so EPIC, standing for Equality and Parity 
in cycling. And it's a group that's been formed in the aftermath of, frankly, a prize money debacle here in the UK hill climbing scene last year that prompted an online petition which garnered 4,300 signatures, but yielded a, frankly, pretty poor response from the governing body responsible, which is not British Cycling, we should say, but mm. Cycling Time Trial. So the kite mark is a way to celebrate those that are already providing equality in their events, whether that's organisers or indeed clubs. Uh, organisers who do meet those requirements will be able to display the kite mark on their promotional materials. Yeah, I really hope this takes off. You know, it's a fantastic grassroots initiative to combat a fairly basic problem, but it does need the support of us lot who yep. are entering events, doesn't it? Uh, right, moving on, Giro have just launched a new team called Flashpoint Movement. It's a full rider team comprised of people with very different backgrounds, but all united with an aim to break down the barriers that prevent people from enjoying riding bikes. Nehemiah Brown, Amanda Shaper, ex-BMX freestyle pro turned roadie and gravel rider Andrew Jackson, and finally, Kathy Pruitt, who is a former junior world downhill chap. Uh, they're supported by, well, as well as Giro, Canyon, SRAM, Wahoo, Tule, and WTB. Yeah, now, I'm not sure if you're technically able to travel to get there, but I did enjoy hearing that Yellowstone National Park is opening its western gate to bike riders, but not motorised traffic for the first few weeks of spring. Really? Yeah, how it's cool awesome, is that? Isn't it? Imagine having that kind of scenery all to yourself. It looks beautiful over there. It does, it? doesn't it? The only slight caveats to this, though, Si, are that it sounds pretty chilly over there and quite scary as well. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I noticed this in the information. So here are a couple of points in terms of do's and don'ts. Anticipate encountering bears, uh, bison, elk, wolves, and other wildlife. Okay. Stay at least 100 yards from bears and wolves and 25 yards from all other wildlife. Uh, prepare to wait or turn around if bison or other wildlife are on the road. Carry bear spray and know how to use it. Crikey, mate. Yeah, well, I'm not going there for a start. <laughs> oh, no mention of moose, which apparently are, f are far more dangerous. Did mm. you know that? I didn't, no. Yeah, watch out for moose. I don't, I've got no moose spray and I don't know how to use it either. Anyway, we're <laughs> going to use move. moose though, don't you, okay. mate? <laughs> yes. It's a joke that went straight over my head because it's so greasy from <laughs> moose. Uh, anyway, here is a cool story from India, which is a country plagued with air pollution problems. Uh, one city though, Ranchi, is looking to try and change that. Well, yeah, so studies there have shown that most of the population live within just five kilometres of their work. So it is perfect for a transport infrastructure that could be dominated by bikes. But currently, that is most definitely not the case. Pollution levels there are seven times higher than WHO maximum levels. So the authorities are pushing for car-free Saturdays, reducing pollution on one day a week, but hopefully changing people's behavior beyond just that one day a week. Very cool indeed. Yeah. All right, moving on, let's give you a quick GCN Plus film update. Uh, this week's films are Steel Is Real, The Reynolds Story, a legendary brand that was the choice of a certain Eddie Merckx in his career among many other champions of the sport. Yeah, and we also have North to South, which is a Spanish adventure with Josh Ibert. Now this, I think Dan, is a great bit of escapism. He journeys the length of the country in eight days of riding, seemingly just linking together UNESCO World Heritage Sites with just little known roads and gravel tracks and amazing scenery. It really, like, yeah. yeah. Given that you can't travel at the moment. Your this, jealousy is coming out again, Si. This will take the... Tick the spot, tick the spot, tick the box for you, and hit the spot. It is now time for Hack Forward Slash Bodge of the Week. We'll crack straight on with it. Tim Schmelsley uh, rose in with this. Self-made mini Fender. Couldn't find any Fender to match my expectations, so I made my own matching the colours of my Chinelli. It won't keep me clean, but hopefully the bearings. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. Front headset bearings, lower race, perennial problems from those if you ride a uh, gravel bike or a cyclocross bike. It looks like a bodge until it's on the bike, at which point it looks quite good. Well, yeah. I'm not a massive fan, if I'm honest. I mean, it's nicely done, but but yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a hack. If, let me know how long your bearings last. If you get an extra few months out of them, I'll probably say hack. I'm uh, reserving judgment. Yeah, you? I am actually. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, well, I'm going with hack for that just because it looks so nice. Right, fair enough. What do the viewers say? Uh, Oh, I don't know, I forgot to write that bit down. I reckon, I'm going to guess, and I'll come back to the end, at the end of Hacks and Bodges, I'm going to say 78% went for Hack for that one. Really? Wait and see at the end. I think lower than you that. You must all be on tenderhook right now. Right then, uh, Roger S. Lloyd. Um, any relation? Nope. 
Okay, uh, sent us this one. GRX 4630 chain set with a 9 to 42 wow. 11 speed cassette and DI2. That's a bit of a mind melter, isn't it? But there you go. Um, I live in the French Alps and ride up to 200,000 vertical well, meters per show year. Showing off twofold there, isn't he? How many Everesting is that? Quite a few. Um, anyway, uh, my ideal cadence. You're a bit of a spinner, 97 to 105. So uh, here you go. This like massive gear range. That's bonkers, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've just been working out in my head. It's about 22 Everestings. Have you actually? I didn't listen to anything else you said. <laughs> I'm impressed, that mate. You don't need out. to listen to anything if you're doing, uh, you're doing maths like that. 22 uh, Everestings. Well, it's not about the Everestings. It's about whether it's a hack or bodge. What are you going with? Well, I've got to say <laughs> hack, probably, actually. It's not my cup of tea, personally, but that... Oh, That's I don't need such high gear ratios when I'm climbing. Uh, I do, so I'm going to give it a hack. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It reminds yeah. me of a, uh, an April Fool's I saw from... Um... Really stuck in your mind, this one, didn't it? I'm just trying to think what the bike brand is. Schindelhauer, there we go. Uh, and they mated a pinion gearbox to a Rollhoff rear hub and they created something like 227 gears for it, which uh, I thought was excellent. Was that your cup of tea or not? It was funny. Good okay. bants. <laughs> right then. Seventy-three percent of you went with hack for that one. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, moving on down to this one from Mackie's Mark, which is Giro Empire X Nike Marmite. Uh, gave these reflective grey and boring Giro Empire shoes a cheeky wee makeover. Love them or hate them. Uh, the main colour is chameleon purple blue and pinkish tint with a yellow gold swoosh. I added neon pink Giro laces just in case they weren't quite bling enough. Well, it's quite the transformation, I'll give you that. Yeah, nicely done as well, actually. It looks like, it looks like a pair of Adam Blythe shoes, to be perfectly honest. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I think that's a hack. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for hack for that. Uh, and four-fifths of you went for hack, or an old money, 80%. Mm. Maybe Interesting that you've gone for a Nike swoosh as opposed to a Giro. I think for cycling shoes, I'd rather have Giro on my shoes than Nike. Would you? Well, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'd have gone for Adidas. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, next up we go from, uh, from uh, Togis. Cube logging truck. Uh, big marathon race going well, record time uh, on the books, uh, but just one crash landing, a little bit heavy, uh, and I broke a rear linkage, zip tied a log to be able to ride the last 15 kilometers to the finish line to beat my personal best. Well, there you go. Zip tied a log, that should be an automatic bod, shouldn't it? But if you get a PB and manage to ride to the finish. That's a roadside hack, I think, Dan. Yeah. So it's got to be a hack. I mean, well, that's. I'll yeah. go for hack if you do. I'm going for a hack, and yeah. Led by your judgment there. Uh, all right, well, 62% of you went with hack for yeah. that one. Before you cry found, so there's a zip tie, therefore it can't be a hack. Roadside repairs. Yeah, different you're allowed category. zip ties. Yeah. Category. Zip ties uh, are not allowed on anything permanent in my book. Uh, okay. And lastly, this week we have this one from N Much More Zero Two. Uh, computer mount. I needed a place to mount my computer on my new integrated bars. With shipping, a Lazine out front mount was going to be almost 75 bucks. <laughs> I had a carbon tube laying around since I'm trying to learn how to fix cracks in carbon to fix a frame I was given and decided to use a small piece of that to create a mount. Well, <laughs> do you know what? I think I could, I, I, I might have been capable of that with uh, the tubing and a hacksaw. Yeah, I think. If I was if I was learning how to fix carbon, I think I'd be tempted to craft something a little bit more organic looking. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying I'm not organic trying... looking. My well... goodness, Sai, si. what's what have you turned into? <laughs> I think I've always been this man. I've just been hiding it. No, I mean, I think that's a bodge, quite frankly. Okay. You've saved yourself seventy five bucks. That's great, but um, I think the execution possibly lacking slightly. Okay. Well, if you're wondering why I'm on my phone, I am you're quickly bored. trying to get uh, to the first hack or bodge of the week to see what the, the viewers gave it. What did I say? 78%? Yeah. 64% hack. There we go. That's a little off. A lot of you have um, standards as well. Yeah, I know you're all hanging on, on tenter hooks for that percentage, but there you go. Uh, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show with your hacks and bodges. All you've got to do is upload them to the GCN app. Caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you got to do is put a witty caption to a photo we're about to give you down in the comment section below. Uh, and we'll start, as always, with results from last week. Uh, this is the photo we gave you. Uh, Garrett Thomas, Adam Yates and Richie Port having just won and come second and third overall at the Vodka Catalunya. Uh, Fergal Akala is the winner this week. 
Another clean sweep is needed. The curb is just filthy. <laughs> Very I like good. that. I was in quick with that one as well, and I liked it immediately. So Very well good. done to you. Uh, make sure you write to us on Facebook with a message with your address. We'll send the bottle out to you. Yeah. I just love that photograph. Sorry. I just love the fact that the Volta Catalunya was like a third cat race this year. <laughs> just brilliant. Uh, right then, uh, this is uh, this week's photo. Stefan Kung um, getting up close and personal with um, some cobbles at the Tour of Flanders at the weekend. Dan? Do you want a bit of Swiss roll? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my word, that's appalling. Is that, is that what you're going to go with? Uh, yes, I was going to do something about press-ups and your uh, inability to do them, but I went with the Swiss roll. <laughs> Um, I don't know whether that's got that will travel internationally, Dan. But Maybe just in not. case yeah, you don't know, a Swiss roll is uh, is a cake. Um, it's only here in the UK, and it's basically like a flat cake. Then you put jam and cream on it, and then you roll it up. Um, it's just like a log, basically, or a roll, in fact. Never at any point in your life, side, do you think you'd get paid to describe what a Swiss roll is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Anyway, that's an explanation as to why my joke still wasn't funny, but you can do better, I'm sure. Leave your captions in the comments section down below. And just before um, we get some irate comments, there's, there's lots of different types of Swiss roll. Obviously, you don't have to just have jam and cream. You're getting favorite. worried now, aren't well, you? Well, yeah, there's chocolate ones as well. Um, <laughs> but it's slightly different to... Um, what's the what's the one where it's... Jam roly-poly? No, there's one where you don't put any flour in it, so it's just like... I've um, got no idea, so. You're, you're ruining it. A roulade, thank you oh, very much. Yeah. It's different to a roulade. This is like a cake as opposed to okay. a, as a roulade, yeah. um, which feel, also comes in lots of different flavours. Um, I feel, feel like this is starting to take away from my genius caption now, so I, to be yeah. perfectly honest. Great caption. As ever, before we get on to what's coming up on the channel over the next week, a quick look back at our favourite comments from the last week. Uh, firstly, underneath Can We Destroy an Electronic Group Set, uh, in this instance DI2 from Shimano, Matt H6565 says, GCN can afford to completely ruin bike with DI2 or Tegra. Also GCN cannot afford a shovel. <laughs> yeah, can we just, just for the record here, everyone say that the bike was not ruined. No. Like, so we kind of we kind of figured that it wasn't going to get ruined, but um, the fact that the group set is literally now back on Connor's bike that we stole it from is uh, is quite remarkable, and the rest of the bike's still going strong too. So um, so yeah, there we go. Please do not be afraid for that poor bike, um, and we are not contributing to the uh, worldwide shortage of components. Um, anyway, uh, Ilya Shmakov said uh, the best salty water test. Oh, would have been lending it to Sai uh, for a week of Zwifting. First time he'd read that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did actually, so the, I had a bike uh, on my trainer all winter and uh, I took it off to go and ride it outside and the handlebars wouldn't turn. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yes, unfortunately I appear to have um, uh, corroded my headset. Yeah, Sai's sweat can penetrate all types of grease, no matter how good. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, underneath Mountain Biker versus Roadie, which was effectively Blake, versus Hank. Uh, Blitz put Hank and Blake together is like a Marvel and DC crossover. This one is epic. Uh, whilst Fabian B put, whoever came up with the fist bump counter, you made my day. How many did it get up to? I don't know. Oh, can we see, please? Yeah, right there. We you I was crawling you back. Like two peas in a pod. Really. They are Hank indeed, aren't they? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, right then, underneath the uh, Victoria Airliner vid, so this is kind of run flats for bikes, basically, uh, which if you didn't see, you should definitely check out because there's some interesting tech from Victoria there. Um, Philip Cooper said, let's just have a moment of silence for yet another biking excuse that died today. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no more getting stuck mm. inside the road with a flat tire. Um, Whilst Kieran Hook wrote, they should have called it Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Genius. Nice, that would have been blooming good, wouldn't it? Um, I wonder whether that's the same Phil Cooper that uh, used to race mountain bikes down. Oh, I was thinking that. Let uh, us know. There, there probably are quite a few Phil Coopers in the world. There are. We used to race against one uh, in the mountain bikes. Were yeah. you a former mountain biker and did you once survive entirely on a diet of peas? Do you remember the peas? Did I know that? I think it was a teammate of Phil Coopers at Rally. Yeah, you would have been, yeah. Yeah, anyway, rider. we are digressing. Uh, finally, underneath last week's GCN show, I thought you might like to see this side, a Velo David put in five versus one, surely the time should have been taken on the fifth rider like it would be in a team time trial in the pro ranks. That's true that, but it depends on the size of the team, doesn't it, to start with. So like in the team pursuit on the on the track, you can finish with three, can't you? Yeah. Start with four, finish with three. So it feels, nah, okay. feels like it was okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm just trying to give you some straws to clap. Thanks, so mate. No, so. I'm definitely not going back for that one. No. Nope. All right. Well, let's get on with what's coming up over the next few days. Then, starting on Wednesday, ten things you didn't know about pro bike racing. Uh, then mm. on Thursday. Um, 20 minutes uh, session, 20 seconds on, 40 off. That is ridiculously hard, isn't it? Ridiculously Micro hard. Micro intervals are always very hard indeed. Yeah. Uh, Friday, how to improve your roller skills. Yeah. It's, bit, it's slightly too expert level for myself and Si. We're still at the um, how to ride rollers stage, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and then on Saturday, we've got another beginner versus amateur versus pro. Freddie makes his comeback, this time on a time trial bike. So uh, that's going to be super interesting to check out. On Sunday, we've got, well, it's a Paris Bay special with Magnus Baxter, uh, our local Paris Bay winner, um, which we, we can watch and, and just you know, wet your well, appetite like a, for it's October. It's like a preview six months in advance of this mm. year's race. It, it is, yeah. But uh, anyway, that's a cracking vid with Connor and Magnus. And I believe Magnus's daughter, who is hot, isn't she? Basically. Yes. Well, yeah, both we, his daughters are, but... <laughs> Magnus was in on Sunday to do the pre and post race show for Tour of Flanders, wasn't he? And he was telling her uh, some of her numbers on the bike. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, right then. Uh, we'll do another one as well. Uh, Sunday, we have got a fantastic behind the scenes at the Tour of Flanders. Shimano invited us into their neutral service cars to get possibly the best seat in the house for the Tour of Flanders. So you've got to check that one out. Uh, Florian from GCN en Francais uh, filmed that for us. And uh, yeah, cannot wait to see it. I did notice actually from some of his Instagram videos that uh, obviously the Shimano neutral service car is towards the back of the bunch most of the time. I was thinking to myself, had that happened in my day, I might have actually got on screen for something. <laughs> Quite a lot of screen time there. Anyway, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that video. Right then, that brings us to the end of this week's GCN show. Um, 30 something minutes long, so way longer than the 30 seconds that you need to do uh, every now and again in order to get fitter. Let us know actually if you ever do this experiment. Um, I'm considering doing it myself. I might even be able to squeeze in that much time on the bike. Well, imagine it, yeah, you could like, you could literally do like, get up in the morning, 30 seconds, go and make a cup of coffee, whilst it's brewing, jump back on, another 30 seconds, go and like do something else, 30 seconds, boom, that's your training, done. You what, haven't even had your morning coffee yet. How hard can it really? be? Answer, still quite hard. Yes. It's a weird feeling doing an interval, not getting out of breath, and then you stop pedaling, and then suddenly you get really, really out of breath, and you get more out of breath the more you recover. I was actually a little bit panicked <laughs> the other day when I was riding home. So uh, so just, that's a that's a warning. Just, is pro you know, consult your doctor before tackling any strenuous intervals such as this. Okay, we'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs>